My name is Jessica Reynolds, and I'm going to be talking with you today about treating epilepsy in children with a ketogenic diet. Um, I was thrilled to be asked to speak at KetoCon this year, and also, you know, thrilled to be able to present this online to you. But when I saw the topic that I was going to be speaking on, I was also uh, nervous. I was excited because it's not my normal topic, but I knew that it would stretch me and speaking on something different um, is really, really good for me personally. But um, I normally present my personal transformation. Um, I tell my story of major weight loss, of overcoming mental health issues, and um, acting as a coach now to help other people overcome their mental health issues and um, eating disorders. So I'm really comfortable with that, but this I decided to treat as um, an opportunity to tell my daughter's story. When I first approached this, I thought, well, I'm going to make a bunch of screens of science and talk to you about the different types of ketogenic diets for children. And I started to do that, and it struck me that anyone can do that. Literally anyone can make a slideshow and show you um, different types of ketogenic diets, the history of a ketogenic diet, but only I can tell Clara's story. And I think that's really important to me because that's how I always approach any sort of presentation. I want to inspire, I want to make a difference, and I want someone to hear it who might be um, have some hope. So I decided to tell Clara's story, and here it is. All right, who am I? I'm Jessica Reynolds, um, also known as Coach Jessica Online. I'm certified in low-carb, high-fat nutrition, holistic nutrition, life coaching, and cognitive behavioral therapy, coaching for eating disorders. I'm also a Keto Evangelist lifestyle coach for over the last three years, and I specialize in freedom from food addiction, emotional wellness, and healing. Um, most importantly, I am mom to Super Keto Clara, who's an amazing keto kid. She successfully treated her seizures with a ketogenic diet for nearly four years. I do wanna throw this disclaimer in there. I am not a medical professional. Always partner with a doctor to treat any disease. This is our story, it's not medical advice. So um, I was one of those people who really never thought about epilepsy. I didn't ever see things about epilepsy on the internet. Um, I would see things about childhood cancer, I would see all kinds of horrible diseases and fundraisers for those, but I just never thought about epilepsy. I, there was a, a lack of presence or conversation about that. So it was not on my radar when it came into our lives. So I started looking at epilepsy and I was shocked at how prevalent it is. I was amazed to find that there are 65 million people who actively have epilepsy. And what that means is it's people who currently are diagnosed as epileptic, meaning they didn't just have one seizure. If you added those people to that number, it would be much, much more. Um, so in America alone, we have 3.4 million with active epilepsy. And out of that number, 470,000 of those are children. That number especially stood out to me, the 470,000 because I know it isn't just 470,000 children, it's 470,000 households. It affects the mom, the dad, the brother, the sister, everybody who lives in the house with the person who has epilepsy um, is, is changed forever by that. And um, so that is really compelling to me. And I'm hoping that some of those 470,000 households will hear or someone will share with them this presentation about a ketogenic diet for epilepsy because I know it has improved our quality of life tremendously and perhaps it's something you have not considered before, uh, but it can definitely make an impact on your life. One of those 470,000 children is mine. Uh, meet Super Keto Clara. 
Um, she is my hero, and that's her little bitmoji that she created there. And um, I'm so proud of her, and I'm going to tell you why. Who is she? Well, first of all, she's 12 years old. She's going to be 13 in July. She is the daughter of me, Coach Jessica, and my husband, Keto Sasquatch. We are a ketogenic family. It is important to all of us. I think that's one reason why the lifestyle works for her as well. Her best friend is her Maltese dog, Toby. Um, his real name is Tobias Leonidas Reynolds. And she is just finishing up seventh grade um, with the online academy. And um, Claire was diagnosed with epilepsy soon after, after she turned five years old. So we have been dealing with this for eight years. Why is she super? What makes her super? And yes, all kids are super. I know your kids are too, but I'm telling you what makes my kids super. She has maintained a strict ketogenic diet without exception for nearly four years. Um, she's also remained seizure free for over two years with only two seizures total in the last four years since going keto. She has gone from having to take six pills a day for the first five years of her epilepsy to now only taking one fourth of one dose of meds. She openly shares her story and inspires many people on social media. And she has learned so much about nutrition that her friends ask her all the time about it. They bring up whatever it is they brought for lunch and have her look at the back and they tell her, she tells them about the carbs and the ingredients. And it's really just amazing to see her um, be so open about this disease because um, for a lot of people, there is shame attached to epilepsy and she really puts it out there. And I'm so proud of her for that. So these are pictures of Clara when she was one and when she was four. And I decided to put these pictures up because these are the years I'll call the normal years. Um, Clara was an amazing baby. She was, she wasn't just good. I mean, she didn't cry much. Everyone loved her. She just had this amazing, gentle nature. She was funny. She laughed easily. She would make you laugh. She was never sick, ever. She never, ever had an ear infection. I don't remember her ever having a cold or stomach virus or any of those things. And, and I know that's unusual, but I was so grateful because she's so healthy. And um, it was just a joy to be her mom. On the right, you see Clara at her fourth birthday party. She was Qu Queen Clara, and she had a huge, huge party. And that was really the last year of normalcy for us. Um, looking back, I really treasure the memories from before. Um, I think about the ways that she was different and um, the ways we were all different um, before this disease changed us. And um, again, Clara's always just been an incredible joy and a great kid, but epilepsy did take some things away from her. Now this is a picture of Clara. This is her leaving the hospital after one of her stays um, from having um, a seizure, really serious seizure. I think she had been in for about four days when she was finally allowed to come home from this one. But I wanna to talk to you, as you can see, she's obviously not feeling well and she looks sick and she's sad, but I wanted to describe really ha what happened with her. It was a life-changing day and how it affected us as a family. Um, and instead of trying to remember exactly how I felt, I went back into my Facebook memories and dug up an old post from a year after we first got diagnosed with epilepsy. So I'm going to share that with you because I think it's more powerful than the words that I would use now, um, so far removed from it. October 16th, 2012 was the, one of the scariest days of my life. My daughter, Clara, who had just turned five, had her first seizure. She had always been extraordinarily healthy, never an ear infection, no stomach problems, even colds were extremely rare. I still feel like I can remember every second of the day that led up to it happening. Afterward is all a blur. She was unresponsive for hours and her blood pressure was very low. 
She was sent from our local hospital to the pediatric unit at Carilion Hospital in New York, I'm sorry, in Roanoke, where she was stabilized. Despite the excellent care there, they did not get any answers. There were many theories. We followed up on all of them. Some doctors thought perhaps it was a one-time occurrence. We prayed that was true and we moved on with life. Exactly two months later, on December 16th, Clara had a severe grand mal seizure. We almost lost her. Excuse the graphic description, but her little 45 pound body jerked and twisted. Foam and blood came from her mouth and her bladder released. We were scared to death. I felt some relief as the paramedics arrived, but it was short lived. Looking at their faces and hearing them talk urgently among themselves, I knew things were very bad. They were unable to intubate, intubate her and called a doctor to meet them en route. He pulled up in a parking lot and jumped in the ambulance um, as we were stopped at a red light. They told him that her oxygen levels were extremely low and they had been unable to stabilize her. The doctor attempted to help as well, but nothing changed. After reaching the hospital, the breathing tube was inserted, but she continued to seize for hours. Finally, they gave her a paralytic. They actually gave her 10 doses of Ativan before her body stopped um, seizing so that they could do the necessary test. They explained that she was still having the seizure, but that her body could not move because of the men. We were rushed by ambulance to Roanoke again. They wanted to airlift her, but it was too foggy. She was still conscious and had the breathing, still unconscious and had the breathing tube. From that point, it was 20 hours until she finally opened her eyes and looked at us. They did not know how she would be or if there was any lasting damage. The breathing tube came out a few hours later. Then the most wonderful thing happened. With a small raspy voice, she said, Mama. In that moment, I somehow knew that everything would be okay. Her mind was okay because she knew me. Eventually, she was diagnosed with epilepsy, cause unknown. They started her on meds. At home, she continued to have brief seizures many nights. They upped the meds dramatically, and that eventually slowed down. It's now been over six months since she's had a seizure. We are thrilled and grateful. It has been a very tough year. The experience has taken a toll on all of us. The medication changed her in so many ways. We accept it because it's doing its job, but I still worry. For us, in the beginning, I didn't sleep at all. I laid right in bed beside of her every night, just watching and checking her every breath and movement. If I finally had to sleep, Mike slept right beside of her. Even still, I get up and check on her several times a night. It's now like a built-in instinct. I've noticed Mike does the same. We lost all sense of safeness, even in our own home. We were those who thought nothing really terrible could happen to us because it hadn't before this. This year has been hard on me. I've not been available to many who needed me. The depression that was worsened by this incident has been overwhelming, and for many months, I haven't left the house. I still don't very much. I don't answer calls from friends or accept invitations. I know that some people have not understood that and unfortunately has caused some broken ties. I'm very sorry for that. So, as I said, epilepsy changed Clara, but it also had a profound impact on us as her parents. Um, I already struggled with mental health issues, an eating disorder, a sleep disorder, and when this happened, it really exacerbated all those things. And I basically became a recluse. Um, it wound up being about five years before I ever started leaving the house again. It really, it, it spiraled. And this was sort of the, the impetus for that. Um, okay, a surprise solution. Keto. Now, now comes the happy part. Um, so here's the interesting thing. I think now that keto is more popular, a lot of people have heard that it's good for kids with epilepsy or adults with epilepsy. We did not know this. Um, Mike and I had started our keto journey in the beginning of 2016. And I was, I did it again because I 
it, for my mental health issues, I had gotten up to 309 pounds. I was miserable. I was suicidal. I had gone through electric shock therapy um, to try to get better and nothing had worked. My health was terrible. And so a ketogenic diet changed me that year. Um, I started getting well. I was thinking more clearly. I was losing weight and I felt terrific. My husband joined me about five months later. And while he didn't struggle with all the problems I had, I think the reason that he decided to join me was that he saw me change in a way that I had never changed before. Um, I wasn't back to my old self. I was better than that. My brain was clearly working better. I could think more clearly. My emotions were stable for the first time in a long time. And um, so he joined me. He had lost about 60 pounds on keto and really gotten into shape. And um, so we were already pro ketogenic, but we didn't have a clue that it was in any way related to treating epilepsy. This is us really quick, keto family transformations. There's me before and after um, 143 pounds. And there's my husband before and after. And you can see we, we live the life, we're into it. So now you see Clara. And I think it's really important to note that um, we never put her on this for weight. There's obviously a weight change there, but we didn't put her on it to have her lose weight. What had happened with her when she, um, when she started having seizures, and it was a combination of having epilepsy and the extremely high dose of meds, she changed. Her personality changed. She became super withdrawn. She never wanted to go anywhere. She did not want to talk to friends at school. She didn't want to leave. She cried every morning because she didn't want to go to school and be around people. And I think some of that was her fear of having a seizure at school. And the other was it's, it was just her new normal personality. She was afraid all the time. And of course, that, was, that continued to be a burden for us because we couldn't fix that. Um, she also, as soon as she got a, a certain medication, she quickly gained 12 pounds. So she was this a little tiny kid. The medication caused the bloat that you see there. Her eating really didn't change during that time. But she had pretty major mood swings. She went from being sweet to sometimes really mean and angry. And we knew it wasn't her, but it was still so hard. And um, she just, she wasn't herself. Um, so that lasted for about five years from ages five to nine, about four and a half years. She was on this high, high dose medication and she went through all that. We got used to the new personality um, and dealing with the extreme highs and extreme lows. Um, and that was with medication. And she still had breakthrough seizures. Anytime she got a fever, she had a seizure. Anytime she was at all sick for any reason, she had a seizure. Um, she had seizures in front of friends. Um, she had seizures, you know, in public places. And um, it was just a really tough life for all of us. So we were, so right around that end of, the year where Mike and I had gone keto and had a lot of success, we were at a follow-up visit at Clara's neurologist's office. And it was interesting because we saw a, a flyer. It was in a frame, but it was like a flyer. And it talked about the Charlie Foundation and nutrition for kids with um, epilepsy. It didn't say keto on it. It just was the Charlie Foundation. So when I got home, I decided to look that up. And lo and behold, keto. Keto <laughs> is a diet that's tre that treats um, epilepsy for kids. And it was, it's been studied, it's been done. And I was really shocked by that. And the most, the most shocking part, honestly, is that we had been on meds for, you know, almost five years. And no one had ever mentioned Clara's diet during that time. Looking back, I think, man, diet should have been the first line of defense and then add meds if needed. 
And so that was disappointing. And that's something that I aim to change as I have conversations with people who treat Claire today. Um, I do like for, to let the world know what a ketogenic lifestyle has done for her. So again, it, we first became aware of it. And um, I want to talk about how Clara reacted to us telling her that she was going to go keto. So we did, we did all the research and we kind of hemmed and hauled for months. We didn't want to take it lightly that we were taking a nine-year-old and we were going to um we were going to ask her to change everything about what she ate we were going to ask her to be do something different for what her friends were doing we were going to ask her to um to go into situations where she would be the only one eating differently than others so we didn't take that lightly what we did do was we started to cut her carbs. We basically um, got rid of anything in our house that was junk food. We had done some things like switching out, um, you know, bread for low carb tortillas. And she was sort of okay with that. She knew we were keto, but she didn't want to do it. So the day that we decided for sure we were going to do it, she had just had a really bad seizure the week before. And we sat her down and we said, Clara, we're going to have you go keto. And she was not happy. She cried a lot. And the way that I explained it to her is what I tell people now. It was not easy. It was not easy to even break that news to her. But as a parent, I couldn't know that there was something that might help her and not try it. That would have been irresponsible for me. It would have been wrong. And so I did say, you know, if this doesn't seem to help your seizures, if nothing changes, then you can go back to eating the way you did. So she reluctantly came along, not that she had a choice, but she was nine and we're the parent and we made that decision. Um, it was not popular with our friends or relatives or anyone else. Um, and so during that time, um, we saw Clara blossom. She changed. And again, she didn't really change back into the person she was. She got a, her personality developed differently. Um, some of the really neat changes that happened were cognitive changes. She had been in fourth grade and she was reading at a fifth grade level. So we always thought, you know, our kids smart, she's a year ahead. The first complete year after being keto, she took her standardized testing and she tested at a 13.0 grade level, which is first level college and first year college in reading comprehension and vocabulary. Now, keep in mind, the only thing that changed was her diet. She was still on the meds because we hadn't transitioned off. The only thing that changed was her diet. And I know it's anecdotal evidence, but wow. I mean, I love that I have paperwork that shows one year this was her and the next year. So again, not a fluke, not a, not a mistake in testing. The next year, same thing. She was uh, college level in reading in overall, all subjects, 11.5. So halfway through 11th grade is what she tested. And to me, that is such powerful evidence for what keto does for your brain, her brain, my brain. And um, by then she loved it. She loved how she felt. She was interested in sports again. She joined the cheer team. She loves to run. The doctor actually gave her clearance to participate, which was a huge, huge deal for us because um, that was a that was a problem, and um, she began to go longer and longer without seizures. And over time, with our doctor's help, we weaned her off her medicine down to a very very small amount. Um, we did learn more about her epilepsy during that time. She had originally been diagnosed at, with childhood epilepsy, which typically kids grow out of, and it was disappointing to learn that she has epilepsy. It's not something that she'll grow out of. But knowing that we started this now, that we gave her the skill, this tool 
to avoid seizures and avoid being on heavy meds for her whole life is it, we never second guess that decision that we made as parents. So I was talking to Clara about this presentation and we came up with this list of common objections to keto for children. Since we don't have question and answer, since this is online, I thought it was really important to call out some of the things that you might be thinking right now. Um, and so we came up this list together and the number one thing people say is, how is that healthy? And what's really cool is that there's a super, super sense, um, sensible answer, and it has nothing to do with science. Real food will never hurt your kid. And that is how I answer people. Getting rid of junk food, getting rid of grains and sugar, and replacing it with high quality natural fats, meat, and green leafy vegetables, cheeses, nuts. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. And to question that that's healthy, that they're eating this instead of Hot Pockets, is kind of crazy. And I really like to challenge people when they ask me that question. Um, the other question that, that I get, not normally her, but what about her cholesterol? Um, people think they hear the high fat aspect of a ketogenic diet, and they think somehow our kids are going to have heart disease. I can tell you, again, anecdotal evidence, but I have Clara's paperwork, her lab tests for the last four years. Her cholesterol is perfect, and she's a very high fat diet, about a three to one ratio fat to protein, and her good cholesterol um, is her HDL is super high, and her um, triglycerides are very low, so she is in tremendous health. One thing about having a child with epilepsy, they get a lot of tests done, and she's literally been tested head to toe, and every organ in her body is operating just as it should. So, cholesterol, not a concern. Health, not a concern. Um, growth, won't a child not eating carbs stunt their growth? That's one we both get, and it's also one we see online a lot. Well, I'm here to tell you, <laughs> Clara is 12 years old, and she went to the doctor in January and was five feet three and a half inches tall. She went back in March. She was five feet four and a half inches tall, and she is now five five. And she is a tall girl. Not only do we know she's healthy, she's tall and she's strong. And so, I think this is so important. There really isn't an objection that her story can't overcome. Yes, everybody needs to partner with their doctor, but there is no reason to believe some of the rumors that are out there. And then two other things, people ask me this, especially, and it's near and dear to my heart, don't you think she'll have an eating disorder because of this? Well, as someone who suffered with an eating disorder for decades, um, that, of course, is something that I would never want to um, share with her. But what I think is the exact opposite. We have taught her nutrition. I think pretty much everything I know about nutrition, she knows. She understands macros. She understands, she can, she can tell you what ingredients are good for you and which ones are not and why. By giving her this nutrition background, she understands why it's great to eat this way. She was speaking with another child about um, going keto, and I heard her say to her, even if my parents didn't have me do this, I would do it anyway. It's just smart, and I feel good. And I was so proud of her the other day when she said that. So eating disorders are about hiding. They're about being ashamed of your body. They are about using food to push down feelings. and Feeding your child healthy food and explaining and teaching them nutrition when they're young is not going to create an eating disorder. And in fact, there's an open dialogue about food all the time. And um, so I, I feel like it's preventative of that. And also, you know, she won't have to worry about obesity. Children, adults, we, when we eat keto for a long period of time, our body eventually gets to the weight that we're meant to be. 
So she won't have to worry about that. Um, and another thing that parents have said to me is, how can you take a nine-year-old and do this? Um, you know, don't you feel guilty for taking away those things from her? And I just say, you know what, I would rather hold her hand through a couple weeks of withdrawals than have to hold her hand through dealing with obesity and dealing with diabetes and all the diseases she will not have because she has this lifestyle. Um, and finally, um, aren't you afraid she's not going to be normal? She won't be like the other kids. And this one, again, I love to reply in a way that makes people think, why do we want our kids to be just like all the other kids? That's what creates disorders. And especially if all the other kids are doing something that isn't great. So I'm proud that Clara eats the way she eats, and she is too. Um, that message that you should be like everybody else, you're not normal, that's, that's a terrible message to send. So we celebrate the fact that she's different in a good way. Um, there is no reason to wait until your kids are addicted to carbohydrates, until they are sick with disease, until they struggle with obesity, to then try to help them with nutrition and dieting. That's the sort of thing that creates an eating disorder. So I told you one of the reasons I was proud of Clara is because her um, she has her own Instagram and she posted this the other day in response to seeing a ton of posts that said things like, if your diet's so restrictive that you can't cheat, you're eating the wrong thing. Or it's good to have a cheat day here and there, everyone does it. So um, I started getting texts and people were saying, did you write that for Clara? And I, I had no idea what they were talking about, so I had to go look. And this is hers, copy and pasted words, exactly. So I wanna post about cheating. You might see some people talking about having a cheat meal. Basically a meal where you ignore all the work you've done and eat something completely unhealthy. I don't suggest that anyone has cheat dates. Have I ever cheated? No. The reason is because it's not good for you and I'm sensitive because of my epilepsy and don't want to have a seizure. Also, everyone says they feel terrible after. So what's the point? One more thing people say is, well, your keto is not my keto. And they're right. My keto isn't your keto. My keto is healthy. Also, everyone's different. Some people may be fine after a cheat, but it's still not healthy. So I don't recommend cheating to anyone. If you want to be really healthy, don't cheat. I was so proud of her for posting this. And again, it got a lot of attention. And she's 12. She gets it. So um, these are some sources that we recommend. Since we didn't do a lot of scientific slides, the science is there. And you can find them at these places. The Charlie Foundation, charliefoundation.org, healthychildren.org. Keto all day, every day .com, or you can Google Jillian Solos and she has a ton of videos out there about it. And then of course, Facebook and Instagram, we'd love for you to follow Super Keto Clara, Coach Jessica, The Train Inside Me, Life Electric, Keto All Day Every Day, and Keto Evangelist Coaching. And there we are. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I really hope this message reaches those who need it. If you don't need it, if it doesn't apply to you, please send it to someone who does. Send some hope. There is hope. Thank you.